Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation for integer solutions. We have 2 to the power a plus 4 to the power b plus a to the power c equals 328 and a, b, c are integers. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. One of the things that's kind of nice about this equation is that all the bases are powers of 2, so we can express each one as a power of 2. So let's go ahead and do that first. I can write this as 2 to the power a plus 2 to the power 2 to the power b plus 2 to the power 3 to the power c. And that is equal to 328. But instead of writing the 328 every time, let me go ahead and simplify this as much as I can, and then I'll write it, I'll set it equal to 328, okay? So from power of a power rule, we can just go ahead and multiply the, these exponents, 2 to the power 2b, or not 2b, finally I got that, 2 to the power 3c, and that is equal to 328. So, what am I going to do with this expression? First of all, they are all different powers. One of them is a multiple of 2, one of them is a multiple of 3, so on and so forth. So this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to factor out something, because a lot of times with exponential equations, factoring helps. So let's go ahead and take out 2 to the power a, and now what happens is this becomes 1, this becomes 2 to the power 2b, or not 2b, minus a, okay, I'm overdoing it, sorry, plus 2 to the power 3c minus a. Okay, now, notice that I made an assumption that 2b minus a is going to be a positive, which means 2b is greater than or equal to a, which, uh, if, this, if that doesn't work, we're going to get a fraction from here, and things are going to be messed up, but you'll see that it's going to work. So this is equal to 328, and what I can do is at this point, I can factor 328 as well, so let's go ahead and factor it and write it that way. 328 can be written as 8 times 41, which is equal to 2 to the power 3 times 41. Now, one of the nicest things about 41 is that 41 is a prime number, so there's no way it can be equal to a power of 2, and 2 to the power a must equal 2 to the power 3. So from here, we get that a is equal to 3. That's one of the conclusions we're getting. What about the other one? Well, we can also say that we can also say that this piece here, since 2 to the power a is equal to 2 to the power 3, this piece must equal 41. But that implies that 2 to the power 2b minus a plus 2 to the power 3c minus a is equal to 41 minus 1, which is 40. Now, one of the nicest things about this equation is that once you simplify a little bit, like I got an idea about a, I can go ahead and simplify this even more by factoring again. But I'm going to factor the right-hand side. So instead of 40, I can just write 8 times 5, uh, which can be written as 2 to the power 3 times 5, right? And what is so cool about it? Now, notice that on the left-hand side, we have the sum of powers of 2. On the right-hand side, we have a product. So why don't we just try to write it as a sum of 2 powers of 2? And we can do that, actually. If you notice that 2 to the third power times 5. So 5 can be written as 4 plus 1, which is a power of 2, by the way. And if you write it as 2 squared plus 1 and distribute to 2 to the third, you're basically going to be getting what you need. And that is being able to write it as a sum of powers of 2. So from here, we get 2 to the fifth power plus 2 to the third power. Great. So this is a really nice equation because a, b, c are integers, and I already have a value for a, and we're going to look into other values of a if possible, uh, or you can just argue that, is there going to be a possible value of a? Probably not, right? Anyways, let's continue. So from here, we get two cases. So what are those cases? Well, first case is, first of all, 2b minus a can equal 5, and the other one can equal 3, or vice versa. So let's go ahead and take a look at each case. So 2b minus a can equal 5, and 3c minus a can equal 3 because we have these exponents and we have those exponents, and obviously, since these two uh, sums are equal to each other, right, is, there, is there a way that uh, they're not going to be equal to each other, but two different powers of two, uh, they're going to add up to give us uh, the same number? That is, is that going to be possible? Something to think about. Okay, anyways, let's just proceed with this one. From here, since we already know that a is equal to three, we can just go ahead and substitute that. 2b equals eight, that's going to give me b equals 4. And if I plug in 3 here, 3c equals 6 is going to give me 
c equals 2. And that is going to be a valid solution, obviously, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at the second case and see what that gives us. So we're going to switch around. 2b minus a is going to be 3, and 3c minus a is going to equal 5. Is that possible? So that's what we're going to check next. And if that works, then we'll get another solution and we'll just put it all together. Okay, since a is equal to 3, remember we've found that previously. From here, we get 2b equals 6, which means b is equal to 3. So that looks like a good solution, but let's go ahead and check for c as well. Now, if c is equal to, well, I shouldn't say c. If a is equal to 3, then we get 3c equals 8. But unfortunately, this does not give us any integer solutions. So in this case, c is not going to be an integer. Now, what is that supposed to mean? We're not getting any solutions from the second case. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully that does. Now, if you put it all together, we're going to be looking at a single solution here. A equals 3, B equals 4, C equals 2. But is there a way that there can be other solutions? So let's go ahead and kind of take a look at that here. Well, notice that I was able to take out a power of 2. But on the right hand side, I do have a 41, which is a prime number. So there is no other way to simplify this uh, where A, B, C are integers. For example, if 2b minus a is negative, then we're going to be getting a fraction from here. But then the fraction times a power of 2 is not going to give us an integer, so on and so forth. But definitely, you can explore those options as well. In order to keep this video short, I'm going to skip that part. Okay, so what am I getting from here? I'm getting that abc as an order triple can be written as, and of course here, we're not going to have any permutations of this because a, B, C are fixed. If you look at the original problem, you're going to notice that A, B, C have to be carefully picked because if you switch A and B, you're going to get different results, obviously, because one of them is 4 to the power B, the other one is 2 to the power A, so they're different bases, and obviously, if you change them around, you're going to get um, either smaller answers or larger answers, which is not going to equal what you want, okay? So, as a conclusion, I can safely say that A, B, C can be written as 3, 4, 2, and this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.